Hello everyone, thank you for coming out today. We are Griffin Space LLC, and we are so excited to present our phase one. But first, we would love to thank Academic Magnet High School. It was in these very halls where the ideas and missions for Griffin Space were formulated. And we are encouraged to reach for the stars every day by our teachers, faculty, and staff, all the way up to our principal, who has been so gracious as to allow us to present here today in their lecture hall to pay homage to our very origins. At Griffin Space, we were co-founded by myself, Stephen Hilton, and John Paradise in 2017. Our mission is to open access to spaceflight to the masses through reduced cost and complexity, while also assisting with the communication of science with deep space missions. It's now my honor to present John Paradise, co-founder and lead on the small sat launcher. Thank you. My name is John Paradise. I am a co-founder of Griffin Space LLC, and I will be taking the lead on the small set launcher portion of our startup project. Our initial rocket will be David, a small two-stage rocket designed to bring 200 kilograms of payload to low Earth orbit. It will function on two Griffin engines, one optimized for sea level for launch purposes and one for functioning in the vacuum of space. Both of these engines will be run on electric turbo pumps and a hypergallic fuel mixture of hydrogen peroxide and RP1 at a 7 to 1 ratio. To start a flame traditionally, you require three main components. Oxygen, a fuel source, and a heat source. Hypergallic fuels work so that you can remove the heat source and have only those two components in order to create that flame. These hypergallic fuels allow us to instantaneously start and stop our engine, giving us greater control of the whole system. These two specific fuels can both be stored at room temperature so that we do not have a need for cryogenics. Removing this component of the rocket allows us to re drastically reduce the weight of our system, making it more efficient and less complex. The electric turbo pumps in this will function on lithium ion batteries, which will peel off during flight to, as we go, improve the efficiency of our rocket. Now, with every flight, technology will improve in between, meaning that overall, the entire level of efficiency of our systems will continue to increase. Doing this also allows us to reduce the chamber pressure in our system so that there are less less areas for things to go wrong in flight. The Griffin engines will have two variants, one for functioning at sea level that allows us to take off. This will have a thrust of approximately 150 kilonewtons. The other variant will be optimized for vacuum functionality with a thrust of 175 kilonewtons. These engines will have a total specific impulse of 300 seconds and they will be steered using a 360 degree gimbling system, which allows us to steer without the need for thrust, for thrust factoring, which does require multiple engines at, to function at a time. Now, given everything that I've listed, we estimate the cost of this project to be roughly $4 million per launch. Now, the average person does not have $4 million sitting in a bank account, but given the overall demand for this kind of technology, between governments, specifically the Department of Defense and NASA. Uh, universities and research institutions are always looking for new sources of innovation and scientific discovery. Private industries are always looking for new, exciting ventures to raise capital. We feel that this $4 million cost is a rather competitive price. I would now like to turn this over to Stephen Hilton, the other half of Griffin Space LLC and head of the Private Deep Space Network. Thank you, John. My name is Stephen Hilton, and I'm the lead on our private deep space network. Now, what is a deep space network? Currently, NASA operates their deep space network, which is an array of three stations around the globe that are used to communicate with deep space rovers, probes, landers, orbiters, and any other missions. We would like to privately expand upon this, using three stations, one in the southern United States, one in the mid-European region, and another in New Zealand. This will allow for 360-degree coverage of the sky, allowing for 24-7 communication with any missions. 
on each station will be three antenna and dishes and one radio observatory for increased scientific value of these stations, which will grow over time as the need arises. The demand comes directly from NASA, who has said they need to increase their capacity by a factor of 10 each decade for the next three decades due to the rise in deep space missions over time. Our antennas will range in size from 50 to 70 meters and operate in the S, X, and K, A bands. These bands have been set up by the tele International Telecommunications Union as deep space frequencies, which means there will be little to no interference from other cellular or electronic devices. This allows our antennas to hone in directly on these signals and with the large size, be able to pick up distant and faint signals. As a fledgling aerospace engineering startup, we're asking for your support, your support to help grow our community from the ground up as fast as possible. This is why we're inviting you to join us and become a member, where for $25 a year, you'll gain access to tri-yearly membership letters directly from the co-founders, laying out our goals, our plans, and what we have accomplished. You'll also receive custom digital artwork tailored to our missions and where we are currently at every two months. If you or anyone you know are interested in what we are doing, please join us at griffinspace.com and consider becoming a member. And if you have any questions, please email them to gslcquestions at gmail.com, where we'll be combing through them over the next few months and answering them in the form of an FAQ on our webpage. Thank you for spending your time with us, and let's go make the future. Thank you.